The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Light one candle for hope, because the world is broken and the wait is long. But hope just won't let go. Hope holds space for all our longings, lingers on the edge of harsh reality, like the dawn gently awakening the sky. Keep awake, she whispers, for the world is being made new. So we light one candle, because it only takes one, Christ with us. Light one candle for peace, because the world is broken and the wait is long. But we refuse to be frozen by fear. Peace comes in fits and starts. A deep breath, a courageous truth, a humble heart. Prepare the way, she whispers, for the Lord comes to make the broken whole. So we light one candle, because it only takes one. Christ with us. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. Amen. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Let us say venite together. Come, let, let us, us sing to the Lord. Lord. Let, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the cabins of the earth. 
and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, Truly his salvation, salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, the grass, grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, 
and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's New Testament reading is taken from the second letter of St. Peter, chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 8. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 21, Te Deum Laudamus. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, 
proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We encountered two voices crying out from the wilderness on this second Sunday of Advent. The prophet Isaiah calls comfort, O comfort my people. And John the Baptist shouts, prepare the way of the Lord. These stories are joined by more than the prophetic voice. In both our gospel reading and the reading from Isaiah, we take up a story after a significant gap of time. The gospel reading for this morning was the opening eight verses of the gospel of Mark. And after a brief preamble in which the evangelist writes the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the son of God letting us know what sort of story we are going to hear. We get a quote from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah foretold of one who would come to make straight the path before the coming of the Lord. The good news of Mark's gospel begins not with the birth story of Jesus as in Matthew, not with the birth story of John the Baptist as in Luke, and not with the beginning of time as in John. Rather, the good news of the gospel of Mark begins with a hearkening back to the words of the prophets. Thence with references to the Old Testament, this section of Mark's gospel proclaims the coming of Jesus, the Christ. Most of us want to get the credit we want to be known as the one who got the job done. So it is interesting and refreshing that when it comes to Jesus, the real savior, modesty makes an appearance. The Bible makes it clear that before he arrived on the scene, even Jesus had some help with the prep work. The Gospel of Mark starts the Jesus story by looking back to Isaiah, who said, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Even the Lord needs people to prepare the way. The second Sunday of Advent is a time for all of us to remember the humility that comes with honoring the people before us. If Jesus can admit it, so can we. We all have ancestors in our callings, people who prepared the way. John could have decided that he was the end of the story, the Alpha and the Omega himself. There were probably people around him, captivated, who told him he was exactly that. But instead, he looked out to the future with a humble heart and imagined the one who would really get the job done. Can you imagine the reaction among John's followers when he said, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. People who are willing to follow someone at least want the reassurance that they're following the right person and not wasting their time. Who wants to follow the one who is preparing the way for someone else? But had John not prepared the way and then admitted it, Advent would be a season not of waiting, 
but of mistakenly believing it has all been accomplished by the latest guru. And that would have been a short season, I suspect, not the one we would remember 2,000 years later. For charismatic, godly figures come and go, from Isaiah to John. In fact, preparers of the way are still around. We may be preparers ourselves, but there is only one savior of the world. And in Advent, we are still waiting. Waiting for the savior is humbling. It forces us to admit that the world does not operate on our schedule. This has been a year full of novel experiences and every little thing is cast in new perspective. And yet while the harshness of wilderness may be felt more deeply this year, the same ageless truth remain constant. We are just able to see them more clearly. The fundamental truth of these wilderness seasons is that we are waiting on an imperfect and broken world to pass. The season of Advent reminds us that no matter who we are or where we are in time or space, all earthly things will come to an end. Nearly 30 centuries ago, Isaiah wrote to God's exiled people who are longing to return home. God's message to them is one of comfort. The Lord is coming. On first hearing, Isaiah's message hardly seems one of comfort. The grass withers, the flower fades. Surely the people are grass. That does not sound like a fairy tale ending of happily ever after, and it's not. The comfort offered in these verses is more complex than that. The comfort comes by putting things into a divine and cosmic perspective. All people will fade like grass, but God is mighty and endures forever. The goodness of God will prevail. The prophet does not give an immediate time frame or an immediate solution to the heartbreak and suffering of the people in exile. What is offered instead is a message of hope. For the future. Second Peter is also written to a people longing for God's return. The author's message is not unlike Isaiah's, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire. All things will, in the end, pass away. And in the end, God's justice will prevail. While we don't know the exact date of its writing, we do know that this epistle, this epistle was written to the fledgling Christian community experiencing persecution at the hands of the ruling empire. They are looking for Jesus' return and immediate relief from their suffering. But God does not descend with thunder from the clouds and triumphant material salvation. Instead, God's word instructs the early church to step back and seek a divine and cosmic perspective. A thousand years is like a day and a day is like a thousand years to God. Again, this does not seem like a happy fairy tale message for people experiencing immediate pain and anguish. The author goes so far as to say that God's lack of thunderous return is not to cause more suffering, but instead is an act of love and patience. Once again, we are given a word of hope for the future, but we are also given instructions on how to live in the present Strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish. The final words of our gospel reading today point even beyond Jesus to the continuing presence of the Holy Spirit. 
the Holy Spirit is a gift to anticipate even at the beginning of the liturgical year because it is the culmination of the whole story. In his own life and ministry, Jesus also pointed beyond himself to one who is to come. In this instance, to the spirit who will follow and be a continuing presence in the world and among the people of God. So this passage, which begins by gathering up ancient echoes of Israel's history, concludes by reaching into the present moment. Waiting is not a passive action. We are to live out our hope. In waiting for the fullness of the kingdom of God, we proclaim God's message of justice. In this penitential season, we name our sins and we turn toward justice. We stand in the wilderness, pointing to the one more powerful than us. As the psalmist writes, righteousness shall go before him and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Where righteousness and peace are actively enacted, God is there. Our Advent message from John the Baptist is that we are called to be a people that await the coming of the Lord. We're always in the waiting through victory and defeat, triumph and loss. It is certainly our job as the church to proclaim peace on earth, goodwill towards all and joy to the world. But it is just as much our job to be visible in the wilderness. We stand in the wilderness and welcome all to journey with us in the power of the Holy Spirit. We point to something better. We point to the Christ, the one who is more powerful, more patient, and more loving. We point to the Christ, the one who is to come. Amen.
Let us join in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you hear a voice crying in the wilderness? Can you hear a crying? Can you hear a voice crying in the wilderness? Can you hear a crying saying, Oh, prepare ye, say, oh, prepare ye, say, oh, prepare ye, the way of the Lord, say, oh, prepare ye, say, oh, prepare ye, say, oh, prepare ye, the way of the Lord. First came the prophet crying in the wilderness, speaking to the people, saying, One is coming both to judge and save, you must prepare the way of the Lord. Can you hear the voice crying in the wilderness? Can you hear the crying? Can you hear the voice crying in the wilderness? Can you hear the crying saying, Oh, prepare ye, say, oh, prepare ye, say, oh, prepare ye, the way of the Lord, say, oh, prepare ye, say, oh, prepare ye, say, oh, prepare ye, the way of the Lord. Then came the Baptist crying in the wilderness, I baptize you with water, oh, but one is coming who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Can you hear the voice 
crying in the wilderness. Can you hear the crying? Can you hear the voice crying in the wilderness? Can you hear the crying? Saying, oh, prepare ye, saying, oh, prepare ye, saying, oh, prepare ye, the way of the Lord. Saying, oh, prepare ye, saying, oh, prepare ye, saying, oh, prepare ye, the way of the Lord. Now we join the crying in the wilderness. Let us lift up our voices, saying, Come, Lord Jesus, now into our lives. Let us prepare the way of the Lord. Can you hear, Can you the, hear voice the voice that is crying in the wilderness? Can you hear the crying? Hear it in the wilderness. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the holy church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our presiding Bishop Michael, our bishops John and Diane, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for our president-elect, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of Los Angeles, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Alban, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. 
For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us say prayers of thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we your and one of these servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And, and we pray, pray give us such an awareness of your mercies, and with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Oh,